How specifically is the U.S.-China trade spat impacting CP? It, and what I mean by that is, what have you seen already, and how are you bracing yourself for perhaps a more direct hit in the second half? Yeah, so certainly at a macro level, we've obviously, we see and read the same things. We're impacted uh, our, by every tweet that comes out or by every crossword that's said. But with that being said, we're a bit more insulated uh, relative to our product mix. Uh, we're more of a bulk railway as opposed to just transcontinental trade, so we're tied more to the price of the commodity as opposed to a specific micro activity that happens. So we pay attention to the macro, but in the micro space, because of our own unique story, uh, we're a bit insulated versus maybe what the other railways are experiencing in North America, given that we're actually growing in spite of some of these headwinds as opposed to shrinking. Well, tied into that trade, though, is uh, obviously the deal with uh, Mexico and Canada sure. and the U.S., the USMCA. Does that have any sort of impact uh, and, and sort of the delay in getting that ratified on your business? Uh, to a point, uh, but again, a lot of our revenue is not as exposed. Mm -hmm. um, much of our revenue, we've got about 30 percent of our revenue that's transborder, comes into Canada, goes into the U.S., or vice versa. Uh, but at the end of the day, it has not had a material impact on our business yet. You're based in Calgary. I wonder how much can Canada's economy withstand the drag from a U.S. economy that's grappling with all these different trade tensions? What kind of expectations do you have for a nation, Canadian recovery as the U.S. continues to, to go through this? And it, it could be months before we get any kind of clarity. Yeah, I'm certainly not going to suggest we're not impacted by it. It's, it's too big of a trading partner for that sure. not to be the case. And plus, we're a North American railroad. Uh, part of our revenue obviously is originating and terminates in the U.S. as well. So there will be an impact. Uh, but again, as much as some other roads, we're a bit unique to that given our commodity mix and, and our, the resource risk rich nation that Canada is and what we do export for the country that's not directly tied uh, to the U.S. economy. But then when you look at the broader economic conditions, even if you're hauling, whether it's grain or oil, uh, you know, some of the chemicals, you know, uh, that has to sort of factor into sort of your outlook with regards to, you know, what your business is going to yeah, do. Ab absolutely. Yeah. It, is, it has had an impact and, mm -hmm. and can drag us down. It, it causes us to be, say, more realistic than optimistic, mm -hmm. but certainly have to be realistic and pay attention to that. Okay, so what is your outlook for the various commodities that you do haul, whether it's grain, whether it's oil, coal, potash? Yeah, uh, over the board outlook overall, except for U.S. grain, which has been impacted by exactly what we're talking about, uh, we've got a very positive outlook. We've experienced growth in all commodity segments. Uh, we, we ship actually metallurgical coal as opposed to thermal coal uh, with a very strong partner in tech resources. It's a worldwide partner, very robust growth and opportunity there. Potash, again, growing in the world market. Uh, Canada is a, is a primary sure. potash producer for the world. That's a great space for us as well. And grain. Uh, the grain product coming out of Canada is, is used across the world uh, to produce food for a growing, a growing world, a growing economy. So again, we're in a, in a good space relative to those commodities. So crude by rail, I mean, obviously the U.S. has been dealing with uh, uh, issues with getting its capacity out to the world, and there's obviously pipelines uh, that uh, could potentially come online uh, by the end of this year. Uh, how do you think that could affect your business, or do you think that the, the demand for still transporting by rail is going to hold up? Well, I think uh, eventually, long term, no. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a niche play for us right now. We're mm -hmm. there because there's not enough pipeline takeaway capacity. At the end of the day, that will come eventually, and it's going to move more to uh, back to the pipeline. Obviously, just right now, it's been prolonged, and it's a delayed discussion. Mm -hmm. so what are you doing right now to prepare for that eventuality? Uh, we're, we're diversifying. You know, at the end of the day, we're not we're not focusing our guidance. We're not focusing our business strength, uh, our success on crude. It's certainly business that we want to haul. We want to make sure it's safe. We want to make sure it gets it makes good business decisions sense for us. Mm -hmm. So we're not over investing in capital. We'll be we're being very methodical very disciplined about it and where we can move in and make money and it doesn't expose us long term we're going to be the partner that's there to do it. Let's talk about costs and the Precision Railroad uh, uh, initiative that have obviously has been a big boon not only for you but for uh, some of the other railways as well. Yeah Precision Railroad is all about that. It's, mm -hmm. it's about providing service, controlling costs and turning assets. We've been at this for quite some time. Uh, you know the reason I'm at the Canadian Pacific is part of a transformation mm -hmm. that was initiated with that perspective bringing that operating model to to the industry. Uh, the Canadian railroads have had great ex success doing it uh, over the years, both financial as well as service and capacity for our customers, and now the U.S. roads are starting to implement it. And I suspect and know as they have success and their customers enjoy the benefits of the improved service as well as their shareholders uh, enjoy the benefits of the, of the better rate of returns in their investments, um, it's, it's going to prove itself on the U.S. side as well. And Hunter Harrison, of course, behind that whole PSR movement, he's your mentor. Um, he also looked a lot at North American Railroad consolidation. Do you also see benefits from, from consolidation there? 
Yeah, obviously, a consolidation play eventually is to handle additional growth. Uh, and before PSR, we were capacity constrained and still remain at something you have to be aware of. Mm -hmm. All the railroads, the major six railroads, connect in Chicago. Chicago is sort of, if you fly into O'Hare, that's where the congestion is, that's where the opportunity is. So to create capacity, eliminate those handoffs, and you'll see additional capacity come for our customers as well as for the industry.